This is so, so important. This is wing stem pollen, bright yellow pollen, that is really the first substantial pollen flow of the early fall. Our colonies have just gone through a substantial pollen dearth, and of course it's a good time for doing apigard because they're not very inclined to rear brood anyway, and the apigard tends to shut the queen down even more. Formic acid can do the same thing, honestly, so. But you can see so many loads of pollen coming in. It's the beginning of what I call fall buildup. The colonies that had a spattering of brood are now suddenly starting to rear brood in, in earnest. The queens are really laying eggs big time now. And uh, up until a week ago, you could look in our colonies and the comb had no pollen in it. And now suddenly we see lots of bright yellow pollen and uh, that's really stimulating the colonies to rear brood. Fresh incoming pollen is the most stimulative thing for brood rearing, even more so than fresh incoming nectar. We are now building winter bees. Some of these bees that are being reared right now are gonna have to last several months or more. That's why I'm very adamant about having apigard treatments and formic acid treatments that tend to shut the queen down already done and out of the colony because you do not want to start shutting the queen down now when they're starting to rear brood in earnest to get ready for winter. I've noticed lately several people coming into our store buying apigard and formic acid and they're just now starting their mite treatments in an R area. That's kind of a mistake. Now I get it. If you're running late, you got to do what you got to do. But Although I'm kind of going, you know, I'm leaning really heavily towards anti-chemical. If I had not treated yet, and I had to do something because my mite numbers were, you know, notable, I might be tempted to use Apivar or something like that. But um, I would not use anything to shut a queen down right now. A lot of times people treat in September and October and then wonder why they're their bees uh, didn't make it through the winter or they dwindle down really small in the in the spring. People will say, oh, I had a lot of bees back in October, but now they're gone. There's people actually saying things like they absconded or they left. Well, no, they didn't. They just died because they were old bees because they weren't able to rear uh, nice young bees in September and October if you were treating with Apigard that late. We're in western North Carolina right now, pretty far up a hollow. Uh, Highway 441 is way out that way, probably about four or five miles. And we're up a hollow here. And this is one of our smaller yards and we keep it small on purpose. Uh, this is a great honey location. We make lots of sourwood here and in the spring we make tulip poplar and black locusts and all the stuff you'd want to make up here but it's lacking one thing. It doesn't have very much fall pollen. The wing stem and the goldenrod that we depend on to get ready for winter is kind of sparse up in this area. So we keep this yard down to 24 colonies. I have run as many as 64 colonies up in here and I always noticed that they didn't go into winter in all that great a shape and I have to assume it was because uh, they were um, not enough fall assets for the high number of colonies. They were struggling with not enough pollen. Pollen is so important to get them ready for winter in my view. And yeah, you can feed substitute and do all that, but there's nothing, nothing replaces mother nature when it comes to fresh, fresh incoming pollen. Not only is it the most stimulating thing uh, to make colonies rear brood or to stimulate them to rear brood, but it also is very important for their, their body chemistry. Uh, we're building winter bees right now, and that fall pollen is really important. So these were single-story colonies last week, and we added another deep to them. And uh, they seem to be populating the second box just fine. Well, they had a lot of bees in them, even as a single. And we're giving them an inside feeder today, and starting the process of getting them heavy. And I believe the next time we come, we're actually going to fill the inside feeder and give them a two-gallon bucket. These guys have got to they've got to gain a lot of weight before winter, and coming once a week and just filling that inside feeder is not going to do it. 
And when I do have double deeps, I like to make uh, use of it. I try to get that full, top box full and heavy, and of course the bottom box half full too. And look at that hornet. My goodness, big thing. Yeah, these bees are looking good, and you can tell by looking at them that they have a lot of that Italian genetics. What kind of, what do we got on the lids here? Saskatraz. Saskatraz, Saskatraz bees. Out of all the races of bees, I shouldn't say race, out of all the lines of bees that we've been playing with this uh, late summer, the ones that seem to be brooding the most are the Saskatraz bees, for better or for worse. In our neighborhood, we don't need massive colonies in March, but in some areas, that's a real asset. If I was pollinating almonds, I think I'd take a close look at these Saskatraz bees. Pop a couple more covers. Let's see what we got here. So the orange dot, that's Golden West. So that's some of Randy Oliver's line of bees right there. And then that one, that one is ours. And you can tell, darker bees. And ours too. That's ours too, yeah, darker bees. Uh, all in all, this yard's doing really well. And I did see a little pollen coming in. I was just talking about there not being enough pollen. Um, with 24 colonies, I believe we'll have enough. It'll be okay. So that's a yellow dot. That's a pole line, isn't it? Yeah. We're mixing them up in the same yards. That's the best way to really, you know, tell which is, you know, com to compare. You need to have them side by side in the same yard. Okay. Isn't this a beautiful spot? This is crazy beautiful right here. This guy has large acreage here. He owns that pond across the way. He actually owns halfway up this mountain right here too. Kind of jealous. He has such a nice piece of property. And he loves the bees. Uh, in the older days when I uh, moved the bees out for the winter to go to South Georgia or something, he'd always be on the phone in the spring saying, when, when are the bees coming back? When are the bees coming back? For me, this is the first sign of oncoming fall. And that is the sourwoods turning red. And they turn before everything else in the woods. Uh, dogwoods are changing a little, but these sourwoods are really doing it. This is the bank behind my house, and it's got hundreds of these little sourwood trees on it. And uh, for me, that's the first sign of fall coming. Reds, oranges. You can see the seed pods on some of them. The larger trees are getting dark in the tops. And these small trees are just really turning. They turn earlier than the big trees. Anyway, first sign of fall coming.